Okay, um, welcome everybody. My name is Markus Graf and um, uh, my dear friend uh, Turan Hoxha asked me to um, talk about uh, curatorial theories and practices today. Um, he's, he, he has sent me some images of your own exhibition, so um, today our topic will be um, uh, exhibition design, uh, curatorial frameworks, uh, how to deal with uh, aesthetics and space relations and others. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna give you some examples from my own curatorial experience. Um, I uh, work in the field of curatorial uh, practice for 25 years. So I started in, in the mid of the 1990s to do exhibitions at this time Back then, um, I didn't call myself curator, I just wanted to do exhibitions. Um, but um, at this time, uh, then still in Germany, I did my first exhibition projects in my own flat. Um, and today you would call this an underground gallery or an off-space gallery. But actually at this time, it was the only possibility to do exhibitions because no institution would work with me, obviously. So therefore, um, I started back uh, in the 90s. Um, today, on the one hand, um, I work as professor for art history, art theory and arts management at Yeditepe University. Uh, on the other hand, I work as art writer. And um, uh, in the end, I still work as curator. And until now, I did um, around 150 exhibitions so far. So in this um, talk, uh, at the beginning, um, I will talk a bit about um, what curatorial practice and work means for me, my thoughts on curatorial practice. And afterwards, in order to illustrate this a bit, I'm going to uh, give you some examples of um, uh, exhibitions that I did. So I'm going to show you some works from my portfolio. Um, I'm going to uh, open up now um, a presentation. Um, the first presentation will be about um, uh, a few thoughts on uh, curatorship. Uh, I hope that you uh, can see it right now. Please, either Turan Hoja or any of you, if um, uh, the connection breaks down or um, if there is anything that you would like you know, to ask or to add, then please interrupt me, then um, we might turn this uh, monologue presentation into a dialogue. In the end of this um, presentation, anyway, I would like to, uh, to talk with you. Sorry, I think I will, I will um, give you the chance to, um, to, uh, to ask me questions. So uh, after the presentation, let's have maybe a discussion. Okay, so. Like I said, I would like to start with um, some uh, thoughts on uh, cura curatorship or curatorial practice and theory. Um, first of all, I think that um, curatorship is a multitask profession. Uh, it's an intermedial and interdisciplinary issue. That means you are working with various fields of arts management. Um, on the one hand, you are directly connected to the art world, obviously. That means you have to understand how artists think and work. You have to know about their um, materials and their artistic you know, issues and problems that they are interested in. On the other hand, obviously, you have to know about management and managerial issues, time organization management, uh, institutional organization, uh, media relations, and others. And on the other hand, I think it's something uh, about educational science, pedagogy. So you have to know who you are working for. So um, you will deal with different audiences. And accordingly, in a way, the curator tries to mediate between the art world and the people. So therefore, it's a mixture of uh, education and art history and design and architecture and management and many other fields actually. And obviously, um, if you look at the history of curatorial practice, something which I won't touch upon today, but you can see that since the, 19, uh, since the end of the 1960s, uh, you have um, um, 
the type of the uh, curator as arts manager in art institutions uh, more commonly seen in the Western world and then all over the all, all over the world, you can say. So obviously already in the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th century, there were exhibitions and uh, the history of museums starts in the middle of the uh, 18th century. The history of galleries starts in the middle of the 19th century. So there were always exhibitions in the saloon and elsewhere. But um, these exhibitions were either curated and organized by artists or later by art historians. Well, when you look at the development of the art system in the second half of the 20th century, you can see that um, uh, continuously the art system became more and more institutionalized and professionalized and internationalized. And out of this professionalization and institutionalization of the art world, more and more art institutions and exhibition institutions like art spaces, galleries and museums came up, art centers as well. And so therefore, as you had more and more art institutions uh, working in more and more professional manners, you needed to have an expert on exhibition making. And this actually became the curator. So therefore, um, especially after the 1980s, you can see um, a, a much uh, higher and uh, larger number of um, curators in the um, in the art world. In Turkey, by the way, uh, the term curator starts becoming um, uh, more common uh, from the mid of the 1990s. So uh, there, due to the work of the Istanbul Biennial, the curatorial practice um, became more and more common and known. And today we have also in, in Turkey a lot of different curators working in a lot of different manners and strategies. Obviously, curatorial practice is very closely connected to the production of art. So that's why maybe we can have a short look at how contemporary art works today. As you know, since the 1980s, we don't have any styles and movements anymore, but we can say that strategies of contemporary art are interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary, meaning, you know, disciplines, um, you know, the, the borders and um, the, the differences between the various disciplines like theater and, and fine arts and cinema and photography and painting and social science and industry and whatever they become more and more melting down. So that's why we are living in an interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary world. And that's why contemporary art uh, changed into that manner as well. Today, artists are using all kinds of dis disciplines and media um, and change uh, between those media according to the projects and um, the wishes that they have. It's eclectic, pluralist and heterogeneous. So it's, um, it's a highly dynamic uh, state of aesthetics, a state of art. And um, instead of oeuvres, instead of, a, a, of one coherent and linear um, body of work today, artists are often talking about projects, having a different content. And according to the content, the artist is selecting um, the suitable aesthetic and the media uh, and that's why um, the artists are constantly uh, changing between, you know, media, techniques and aesthetics. So that's why we're talking about projects. And obviously, uh, our um, contemporary life is highly shaped by uh, digital media, lately social media. And this obviously had also high impact on the production of art. You cannot take all these uh, adjectives and uh, put them uh, onto a curatorial practice as well. So that's why also curatorial work today is interdisciplinary, it's intermedial, it's heterogeneous, and we always talk about exhibition projects. So therefore you can see that the history of curatorial practice was always developing parallel to the um, developments in um, uh, the practice and um, the world of art. So that's why um, curators have to have a very close connection to the art world in order to, in order to uh, create um, an environment in which contemporary art can uh, happen. First of all, cur curatorship is an organizational job. So it's um, a part of arts 
administration, arts management. And um, the curator provides a service for the artists, galleries, companies, museums, institutions. And I always see the curator right in the middle of a triangle between the art scene, institutions, and the public. And we as curators, right in the center, we always try to build bridges between the various players of um, the art and cultural work. There are two kinds of curatorship, institutional curatorship versus freelance curatorship. Freelance curatorship is uh, like we all started. So um, normally as curator, you start your career with an ID. You want to do an exhibition, you want to do work or you want to work with artists, you want to build up an environment for performances or for video screenings, or you just want to have some kind of festival-like art project. And at the beginning of the career, as nobody knows you, uh, most probably you're going to do all by yourself. You're going to find space, um, you're going to uh, organize the exhibition, the catering, the media relations, and so forth. So this is one kind of um, curatorial practice where curators, according to their own wishes, build up an infrastructure, um, sometimes all alone, sometimes with a team, and then uh, they move from space to space, institution to institution, and work as freelance curators. On the other hand, institutional curators work for museums, galleries, mostly on a contract base, uh, one year, three years, whatever. And then obviously you have to come up with a program for the institution and this program should have some kind of balance between the exhibitions. It should be in balance with the identity of the institution and so forth. And obviously um, this service also um, includes the arrangement of sponsorship funding uh, and other financial sources. On the other hand, and this is uh, the appealing, the attractive side of curatorial practice, it's a very creative, artistic, analytic and philosophical um, work. So um, nearly like an artist, but definitely like a researcher, we as curators, we do exhibitions in order to understand the world a little bit better. So when I do an exhibition, I always come up with questions or with issues that I'm interested in, that I try to understand. And um, then I always look whether this topic plays a role in the art world or uh, whether it is an important part of, um, you know, the daily life routine here in Turkey or wherever. And then together with artists and their artworks, actually I try to build up um, a world in which we discuss this topic from various um, from various sides. So therefore you have to be creative. You are not an art artist, obviously, but you have to be familiar with artistic um, procedures, visual balance, colors, textures, space, and others are issues that uh, we have to be familiar with. Analytic, because like a researcher, we do an exhibition, we take over a topic and then we try to explain it reasonably to uh, the people. And um, in the end, uh, I could say that the curator helps to open up visions, utopia, uh, that go beyond the known status quo in order to deconstruct reality and destroy cliches as well as superficial assumptions about art and society. So what does this mean? Think about today we are living in a visual culture which is mainly shaped by uh, media, television and um, capitalist interests. Um, so the people are used to images, they are used to visuality, but obviously the visuality of mass media is always filled with cliches and populism. So therefore I think that we as curators, we should try to go beyond the status quo, beyond the known, in order to open up uh, perspectives for the exhibition visitor. So in that sense, actually, I think that like the artist, uh, we should try to uh, create new knowledge and create new alternative ways of sharing knowledge. And in the end, uh, and then this will be the end of the first uh, presentation, maybe I will get some questions before I get to my examples. The curator helps to create, um, the curator helps to create a cultural platform on which art can be shared 
with an audience. So what I think is um, the function of a curator as some kind of servant is to install an environment for art and culture. So we are not artists, but also we are not uh, pure managers. So in a way, I always see the exhibition space as a platform on which artists share their works with the people. And what we as curators are um, responsible for is creating a professional platform in, and then mediating the artwork to the people. So that's why, again, in the triangle, um, as curator, we try to build bridges between the work, the space, if you have a group show between the works, um, and then obviously to um, the uh, to the audience. So that's why um, you as curator, you should always be aware of the space, aware of um, uh, the architectural space, the social political meaning of the context where you are situated in, um, where is it, what kind of people are going there. Um, and so therefore, uh, the exhibition has to be connected to micro and micro spaces. The micro space is the gallery itself, so therefore curatorial work is directly connected to the architectural dimensions of the space. But at the same time, macro-wise, the gallery is part of a neighborhood, it's part of a city, it's part of a country. So that's why you should also be aware of the social political uh, contexts of the gallery itself. So that's why, um, on the one hand, we are very closely connected to the micro dynamics, the solid and concrete dimensions of the space itself, but at the same time, we are connected to the multiple dimensions of uh, the social space or the public sphere which is surrounding the gallery. So, would you have any questions right now? Let me. Uh, have a short break here, and then if you have some questions, I would like to get them. Alptekin, Hatije, Mehves, Shene, Svetlana, Turan, Buyrun, Varma Bishe. Did you hear me, by the way? Did, uh, was the connection stable? Did you follow? Everything okay? Yes, uh, yes, yes. connection is very good. No okay. questions from me. Yeah. So far, so good. <laughs> okay. Okay, then, um, then uh, let me continue with, uh, with um, uh, the, 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 the second presentation that I have. Um, the portfolio. Maybe uh, after this, you might have other questions as well. So, like I said, I have, um, I didn't count it uh, yet, uh, but uh, I assume I, I have around 150 exhibitions curated in my life so far. And those exhibitions vary between um, solo exhibitions at a gallery and um, group exhibitions at uh, a museum. Um, by the way, um, if you want to learn more about my curatorial work, I would uh, I would uh, suggest you to have a look at my 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 Instagram page, uh, Marcus Graf, or my YouTube channel. I just um, uploaded um, a part of my archive to YouTube, and there you're going to find one hundred. Yes. Can you hear hmm? me? I, I just want to make sure uh, if uh, students uh, can follow the uh, presentation. Okay. Uh, because we normally don't use Google Meet. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to be sure. Uh, you, know, you know, in order to see the presentation, uh, you need to look at the uh, second Marcus Graf uh, page. Okay, there are two pages. In one of them, Marcus talks to you. And on the other one, you can follow the presentation. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. 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 Perfect. Great. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. So, um, 
so you might have a look at the the YouTube YouTube channel as well because on the one hand there are some talks of mine also about curatorial issues, but also especially videos made by Art TV, Turkey's first and uh, strongest video platform in the arts, um, has made some very nice uh, video documentations document documentaries about exhibitions of mine. So uh, let me let me just get to maybe. Um, one of my latest exhibitions that I did um, in 2019. Um, pardon. Bir yarım saat sonra... Pardon. In uh, 2019, um, I did an exhibition at Akbank Sanat called uh, Regular Insanity. Um, I was uh, invited to do a show at Akbank Sanat. I don't know how familiar you are, you are with the space. Um, it is uh, in Taksim. It's one of the leading um, art institutions and exhibition spaces that we have. Belongs to the bank, uh, Akbank. Um, and um, when I get invitations by institutions to do an exhibition, I always look at two, three important things before I accept or before I refuse. Um, the first thing is always, I look at the institution itself. What kind of institution is it? If it's an exhibition space, I look at the profile and, uh, and I look at previous exhibitions, what they did. And I try to understand the identity of the exhibition space. And in that sense, I try to measure whether the identity of the institution fits to the identity of me as curator. Um, because it's very important for me to, uh, to be in harmony um, with the institution itself. Because in curatorial work and practice, you, you depend on collaboration. And there, meaning collaboration between the, the, the arts managers of the institutions, but also of the workers and the, the space itself. So you have to check out what kind of gallery is it, what kind of art space is it, and what kind of expectations they might have from you. On the other hand, I always look at what did they do so far and what can I add to this institutions? Because I don't want to do the same exhibition uh, over and over again. I want to renew myself, but also I want to bring something new to the institution. So um, my exhibition should matter, should have an impact on the institution and should bring something new to the audiences over there. So that's why when I looked at um, Akbank, uh, I realized it's part of the corporate communication department of a bank. It is, is very successful. Uh, rather traditional in, uh, in terms of years it's an it's an it's a mature and well-known institution and so when I thought about you know bank and um, the history of the bank and so forth I came up with the idea of doing something about knowledge because you know the bank sector depends depends on economics and economics clearly depends on numbers and solid knowledge so and as an academician, obviously, and as an academic researcher, for me, knowledge is something very important because we constantly create knowledge and share it with our students. As I arts writer, I do the same. I, I create knowledge and I share it via, via texts. And actually, I think that artists are actually doing the same. They create knowledge and share with the people. But obviously, artistic knowledge and artistic knowledge sharing is very different from the traditional uh, ways of knowledge production and sharing in the context of the uh, academy or university or the school. But obviously I believe that um, the alternative and unorthodox production of knowledge in the context of art is something very valuable today. Because, you know, um, absurd knowledge, strange knowledge, alternative knowledge, nonsense knowledge, critical knowledge is something very important that we need today. I mean, as the world went crazy, you know, nobody knows what's going on anymore. And so that's why our old ways of creating knowledge and sharing knowledge became obsolete. So 
that's why I came up with this with this idea of doing something about you know knowledge. And then when I came to the connection between knowledge and the world, I came about this you know regular insanity and düzenli delilik. The world went crazy on a regular basis. So um, the 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 chaotic state state of the world became some became something very ordinary and regular. But in spite of this, we are still relying on the traditional old ways of producing and sharing and archiving knowledge. So that's why in this exhibition, actually, in a way, you know, I uh, propose alternative ways with the help of art and culture. So this was the idea that I had. So when I have an offer from an institution, then the first thing is, you know, I have to come up with an idea. And actually, like an artist, in a way, uh, it resembles a bit the artistic production, by the way. First of all, I have an ID, then I turn this ID into a concept, and then according to the ID and the con content, con concept, I come up with, um, with materials and techniques and aesthetics. And then, obviously, I come up with the selection of the artists and their artworks. So it always goes like this. The ID, the conceptual framework, According to the conceptual frame, framework, I select artists which are already working in that context of the topic that I'm dealing with. Then I meet with the artist, I present my, my, my topic, and then together with the artists, from their portfolio and their available artworks, I select the artists, art, artworks. Um, very rarely I commission artwork, very rarely I exhibit new artwork for two reasons. The first reason is um, when a curator uh, commissions an artwork, I always fear that there is some kind of unbalanced relationship and with the artist turns into a designer. So that's this is like the first, um, you know, obstacle that I see. Uh, and the second one is, um, it's it's always a very risky procedure. And I only commission uh, artworks or I only work with new artworks by artists which I know for a long time, which I can trust, which I can rely on. Obviously, sometimes when I speak with artists and when I present them my, my topics, sometimes they say, yeah, I already have you know, something in mind, uh, which I wanted to work on anyway, and this exhibition could be a great possibility, opportunity. And then al always, uh, obviously, I say, yeah, just, just go and do it. Sometimes um, it might that I want to have an artwork, a specific artwork by a, by a specific artist, but the work is not available anymore. It's it's sold and the collector doesn't, doesn't want to give it to me, maybe. Or he says, no, I just showed it last year at the Space X and I don't want to show it again. And then you have to come up with something new. And in this context, you might uh, select something alternative from the artist or maybe the artist creates something new. But in general, like I said, I have the idea, I have the vision of the exhibition and then I work with artists which are already working in that context. So it was the same over here. Then after I have the vision and the artist list, I speak with the institution, I present the artist list, I present the, the concept, and then mostly, you know, they, they say, yeah, fine, go on. And um, in parallel, obviously, it's a bit like the egg and the chicken, what comes first. In parallel, actually, I have to work with the space. So Normally, the space is a rectangle. It might be large, it might be small, it doesn't matter. But I have to make a space analysis. I have to look at the ceiling, the height of the ceiling. I have to look at the volume of the space. I have to look, is it one large space or is it a space divided into small uh, sections like an apartment? Um, what about the, the walls? Um, what about the floor? Is it a neutral floor? Is it um, a floor which has tiles or is it a wooden floor? So all these things matter for me because um, all these uh, elements of the space have uh, an impact on, I just showed a bit uh, here uh, more, um, all these things of the space have an impact obviously on the look of the exhibition. And then um, I, 
have to deal with the space in a way that often I do separations, especially in large spaces. I like uh, for the uh, exhibition audience to have surprises. It, it doesn't need to be like a labyrinth, but I don't like, but that's my, you know, uh, personal obsession most probably. I don't like that the visitor uh, grasps and understands the exhibition at at first and uh, on the first look and at once. I always like to have some kind of gates and uh, walkthroughs and sections. These sections also make it possible for me to open up um, sections within the exhibition. For me, the exhibition is actually like a book and every book has different chapters. And in this exhibition also, we have different sections. For instance, when you enter the space, the first thing that you see over there are abstract uh, forms. It's an abstract sculpture over here, organic. It's an uh, doodle, uh, an abstract nonsense form over here. And then on the left side, um, there is um, a text which looks strange and which doesn't make um, which doesn't make um, sense uh, at first. But if you look carefully, actually, all these things have meaning. Uh, meaning that um, if you look here, this looks like an abstract uh, sculpture. But if you look carefully, you see that those are actually um, parts of a heating system of a flat. Um, the the uh, in Gejikondus or wherever or in old buildings, this doodle which looks abstract and nonsense first, actually is a work by uh, Mustafa Kunt and Özlem Günyol. Here you see all uh, borders of the world uh, at the same scale being put onto each other. So you see China, you see Luxembourg, normally China would be like this and Luxembourg would be like this, but all the scale is the same, put onto each other and you have actually all the uh, national borders of the world and normally a national border is drawn according to warfare or is drawn according to national interests it's drawn uh, supposedly to ideological or uh, logical reasons but as we all know all these borders are actually drawn according to multiple reasons and um and goals. And here this work, for instance, at first it might uh, sound strange, but if you look carefully, you see learning a language um, is relying not only uh, on understanding and so forth. So you see here, you see the thesaurus or dictionary um, uh, uh, um, language form. Um, this is something when you learn a language, uh, the pronunciation is always written beside it. So on the first look, again, it doesn't make any sense. Um, but on the second look, already there is a, a, a meaning hidden beyond um, the the technique. So the in general, the, the, the entrance ground of the exhibition was dealing with um, knowledge and knowledge production on a rather abstract sense. Then obviously what I always also um, always um, find important in exhibitions is uh, you have to create a rhythm uh, and a communication between different aesthetics and different techniques and media. So meaning size matters. I mean, if you only have the same size of works, you know, it's, it's pretty easy, but if you have large scale, middle scale and small scale works, if you have photos and paintings and videos in one exhibition, in a way you have to create a visual balance and a rhythm, aesthetic rhythm in the exhibition, uh, creating uh, communication and uh, connection between the works and between the space itself. So. And here it's a bit like a composition. It's like a 3D composition on paper, or it's like a music composition. It's like an orchestra composition, in which you try to balance and in which you, in which you try in which you try to create uh, different notes and different sounds uh, with different instruments, so to speak. This is something that I also favor and do. I always put interviews in the entrance of my exhibitions. In these interviews, I ask the artists to talk about their works. Um, and this is uh, 
for archiving, for mediating, and for educating the people, so to speak. So when you come to my exhibition, mostly at the entrance, there is a video. And in this video, artists talk in five minutes about the exhibition, their works, and the conceptual framework. Here you see something else, which is always important, the info wall. On the info wall, um, you put down the artist uh, names, the production team, if you have logos, and obviously on the left here you see in English and Turkish the conceptual framework. So for me it's always very important to have uh, some kind of entrance of the exhibition uh, in which you give information about the exhibition. You can have folders and wall, uh, wall writings and other things. Then something else here in Akbank, we had the problem of having two floors. So you have the entrance floor, the ground floor, and then you get out of the floor, you walk up the stairs here, and um, then you come to the upper floor, which looks like this. So you have two spaces. The lower space, if you look at this, you see um, it's, uh, uh, it's very, it has a high ceiling and it's a very spacious space so it's a very large singular space the space upstairs is also large in, in terms of pl architectural plan it's the same size but the ceiling is much lower so therefore you have a different feeling over there and as curator you have to deal with those things uh, it depends uh, it creates the atmosphere of the exhibition but also it depends it makes you it makes you select sometimes artworks if you have a sculpture of three meters height uh, then you would never be possible it would never be possible to put it up uh, on uh, onto the upper floor for instance so therefore the space of the exhibition uh, is directly influencing the look of the exhibition plus it is always influencing the concept of the exhibition so therefore curating an, ex an exhibition is always a time and site specific installation in a way so that's why nobody should just you know you know, you know, uh, make up uh, any exhibition for any space and and re assume that it will work out anyway. So what I really believe is, before you take on a show, be aware of the concept, uh, be aware of the selection accordingly, and be aware of the space itself and its context. And like I said, in our in, in Akbank Sanat, there were this pro there was this problem of having these two two floors. So when you get into my world. Of the, of the ground floor, you have like f around 10 artworks over there. And then when you get out of the floor, uh, when you get out of the gallery, actually you lose all the illusion that I tried to, to bring up before. So that's why at least I tried to connect the spaces. So here you have some visual elements. You see the black lines and the, the circles were uh, designed by us. So in a way um, you are led towards you see uh, the logo of the exhibition uh, onto the uh, onto the wall. Those are very small and minor uh, interventions, obviously, but in a way, for me at least, it creates an aesthetic connection between the upper the the, the the ground floor and the upper floor. And when you walk up towards the second, then here you can see we have. Um, we had a video by Fishley and Weiss directly protect, projected um, onto the wall at the corridor. And in, in, in examples like this, for instance, you have to negotiate between the video quality, for instance, and the meaning within the exhibition and the space itself. So obviously, normally when you have a, a projection um, with a data projector, a video, video artwork pro display, with a projector, you, you need a black cube, you need a dark space. So here, obviously, you don't have a black space uh, and a black cube. So in terms of video quality, it is a bit lower and the quality is, is weaker than maybe in a sharply made black cube. But at the same time, um, in terms of meaning within the exhibition, this work, due to its displacement in the corridor is like a link between the lower and the upper part of the exhibition. At the same time, obviously, if this would have been a video by um, an, a, a video artist, which is very much relying and emphasizing the high quality of the video itself, the technique, the colors and so forth, 
then this would be an impossible place for displaying it because then the reduction of the technique would harm the work itself. But this work by Fischli and Weiss uh, was shot on super eight millimeter uh, hand cam uh, with a very low uh, quality due to the time of the 1980s, but also due to the performative uh, character of the video. This video is, you can find it uh, on the internet. This video was shot in an industrial hangar and it is some kind of perpetuum mobile, uh, some kind of repetitive uh, movement of industrial projects. And the, the video quality itself, it was very poor. So that's why it was uh, again possible to show it over there. So all these considerations you have to do because for instance, the video team told me that the quality in the corridor will be lower than having it displayed decently in a white cube. A black cube. So this is the upper floor. Here you see um, uh, it, it resembles a bit more uh, maybe a gallery uh, exhibition in general. I decided to have um, a clean white cube um, character of the exhibition. But again, wall drawings, photography, uh, and video had to be balanced between each other. You see small um, formats besides larger formats. Uh, the lightning was important to mention maybe in Akbang Sanat. In, in galleries you have two kinds of lightning. The first one is general lightning, the other one is local lightning. So general lightning is normally the fluorescent um, on, onto the ceiling. Maybe they have, sometimes they have a, a light wall made of plexi or other glass uh, materials in museums uh, often and on the other hand for focusing you have spots as you can see at um, Akbang Sanat we had mainly spots so therefore you have always from the beginning a dramatic uh, lightning you have to be aware of this um, if there is no possibility of having you know general lightning then you know there's nothing to do but if you have um, the possibility of choosing between general lightning and local lightning, I always would suggest you to go with the general lightning because the best lightning in the gallery is the light that you don't see, that you don't feel, that doesn't uh, create any cast shadows because if you have shadowing and if, if you have spotlight in the gallery, it, it will always create a dramatic effect. If you need this on sculptures or on certain artworks, then it is great, but in general, we actually prefer a general lightning. Here you see some more um, uh, instructions. This was this was maybe interesting to mention because here you see four artworks by two sound artists. I wanted to display them um, like this, so I ordered the vinyl pressing of their artworks, and we presented their. Uh, cover art as print over there and then we created small turning um, uh, platforms between being between uh, record player and pedestal so therefore in um, irregular insanity regular insanity um, I wanted to create and reflect alternative ways of production that are suitable for understanding and mediating the chaos of today. But at the same time, I didn't want to create a, a too chaotic exhibition uh, design. I wanted still to have some kind of um, um, clean, um, museum-like, um, you know, simple way of um, uh, aesthetics and presentation. Um, another example, I'm going to show you one or two more, and then um, I will take down the presentation. Maybe you have some questions more over here. Here I was invited by Mili Restaurants, which is also a non-profit uh, exhibition space in Istanbul. It's older than um, Akbang Sanat, it, I think it's from the mid of the 1990s. Uh, our uh, Turan Hoca, he had a very nice uh, exhibition uh, over there as well. Um, Mili Resonance offered me uh, two exhibitions, um, one in 2018, one in 2019. And they have an exhibition series in which they do retrospective 
um, monographic exhibitions by uh, deceased uh, artists who passed away, who passed away, who have passed away recently, but um, who are not commonly or widely known within the exhibition or within the art world, despite actually their meaning. So it's a bit like presenting important artists which are not there anymore. One is called Kadri Özaytan. Uh, he's actually a, a, an artist who uh, rather early uh, in the 80s and 90s worked with collage, installation, and uh, fluxus-like um, strategies. And um, here again, when you do an exhibition like this, it's obviously something totally different. At Akbang Sanat, it was totally, you know, my ideas and my problems and my perspective on the way of the, on, on, onto the world, let's say. And then together with the artists who want to join this adventure, we just do an exhibition. Here, um, the exhibition outline actually, or the scope of the exhibition was given by the institution, but I found it very challenging because it was the first time that I did in retrospective by an artist. So, and this is what I like about curatorial work. I always try to like, like to do something new, um, to learn something out of it. So this is the whole reason why I'm still in, in the game, so to speak. Again, I had to analyze the space. You see, it's very um, obviously that the staircase or that the stairs are very, um, you know, visually uh, pressing um, the, 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 the marble um, tiles um, are uh, very uh, dominating the space. And you have two parts of the space. One is the upper floor, and then you have uh, three, four steps down, and then you have the lower level. And here, um, if you do an exhibition like this, first of all, obviously I had to do some kind of inventory, some kind of research. Um, I had to learn about the artist. Uh, I had to learn about what kind of artworks are available in the collection. And then actually I tried to create some kind of uh, chronology um, in which I start with earlier works from the 70s and 80s. And then later on we came to the main body from uh, the 90s and after 2000. And so you, as exhibition visitor, you walk through the career of the artist. And um, as you can see here, we used also some old TVs in which we showed artist interviews of him uh, on the state television or on which we showed some um, art, video art, early video art made by him. I especially have chosen old televisions because um, you know, it's the old times, uh, the TRT programs, the state programs were all shot in the 80s and 90s. So as some kind of uh, nostalgia, but also historical reference, I found it much more appropriate to use, for instance, these televisions. And I love them very much. I mean, I love the way how they look, the box-like uh, character, and um, they always have something like a sculptural thing. And like I said here, it was rather chronicle-wise. Um, here you see um, uh, in one place I have put up some pedestals and on into this pedestals we took um, parts of his artist book because um, uh, the, the artist book reflected very uh, nicely the mind of the artist and so that's why covered in uh, smaller plexi boxes here um, we came up with an uh, with an idea for those stairs like pedestal i say especially stairs like but it, because if you look carefully you see that those uh, pedestals actually a bit resemble um the staircases or the stairs in the back previously before this exhibition i did ex did an exhibition with gundus uh, about gundus gölünü also an artist who just passed away recently and here you see the entrance of the building. Also, this is curatorial work. So I wanted to have uh, the exhibition visitor an idea about the exhibition in the entrance. So you see a work, you see a color, and then you see a detail of the work um, uh, mounted onto um, the wall. Uh, again, on the left side, you see the, there is the exhibition writing, the text, and um, then you just enter slowly the space through what's the entrance. And while you do so, you see always one work 
from a different faces with one um, with one um, detail. And then in these exhibitions, also with Kadri Öz item, but also with Gün, uh, Gündüz Gölünü, I decided to have an, a biographical uh, room in which um, we just uh, showed uh, the life and the career of the artist. Here again, also then in this sense, I work with designers. And so you see you have the dates, you have photos, you have works, and we created a wallpaper out of um, a design of his works. Here you see the exhibition. He became very famous for printing, um, uh, for printing techniques, and he created these very long, uh, book-like uh, prints. And here you see, this is how I originally used the pedestal. So um, the, the exhibition is called Carved Images, uh, Kazarism. And Kazarism is actually the name for gravure or for etching. So he is a master of printing. He lived for a long time uh, in the States and learned the technique over there very well. So, and for me, uh, doing this retrospective exhibition was some kind of digging field. It's like some kind of um, contemporary uh, archaeology in which I dig into the world and into the soil of Turkish art and we try to dig out um, the heritage and the work of Gündüz Gölünü. That's why I came up with the idea of these pedestals, which on the one hand are long enough to show the up to six meter wide books um, but at the same time i liked the idea of having some kind of architectural site because if you go to fs or if you go to other arch archaeological digging fields and arch archaeological sites the building is gone uh, for has been gone for a long time but um uh, the 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 base of the buildings are still over there and that's why it has a function as pedestal, but it also has a reference to archaeology and um, to uh, to the whole conceptual work of the exhibition. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do a very short uh, break over here. Hold on a second. Um, I'm gonna be right back in uh, ten seconds. Tamam mı Turan? Çok hızlı bir şey bakmam gerekiyor. Hemen dönüyorum. Tamam derim Arkos. Uh, in the meantime, you can you can think about some some questions that you might have for me about the the first or the second presentation. I'm going to be right back. Okay. Bye bye.
So, are you still there? Hello, test, test, test. Yes, we yes, are. Yes, we are. Current senses needed. Okay, so I can hear you loud and clear. I think, I mean, uh, I uh, we already had like one hour. I don't want to overwhelm you too much. So that's why maybe we can just have a short stop here. And if you like, you could ask or add or comment uh, as you wish, arkadaşlar. Okay, buyurun. Hadi arkadaşlar korkmayın ya. Are you there, Edwan? <laughs> Or you just hide? <laughs> yes, we are here. Um, it was very informative. I really don't have any questions, but I was very much amazed by the uh, one artwork and then next to it, the big detail of it. I don't remember mm -hmm. which one it was. Having the detail in a large print, it was uh, amazing. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't have any questions. Okay. okay. Um, while we talk, I just can, um, in the uh, some kind of background, because we don't see each other anyway, uh, I'm going to show you um, a few works while we talk as a background uh, of my work uh, at uh, Plato Sanat. Plato Sanat is an exhibition which was, um, which uh, belonged to uh, an institution a university and for me this was an interesting exhibition situation because I really liked how art and culture became an integral part of um, the student's life and here you see how the space originally looked like so it was a very large space but you have problem you have been running this space for a long time right yes yes it was uh, uh, between 2010 and 2019 uh, i i think i did 32 long exhibitions time, over there <laughs> yeah it's and, a um, really long time so here I, i i will not get into the exhibitions too much but here you might see how with cura curatorial design and work you can change the space according to um, uh, the concept, let's say. So this was the original. So as you can see, it's an industrial building. It was a building that was later attached between two buildings. So, And when I started working there, I had my first problem was that there was no walls. So as you can see, um, this is on the one hand an advantage because then I can do with the space whatever I like, but at the same time it's very difficult, especially when you work with a new institution because they just started and if you come with a lot of um, expectations in architecture and in design and in budget, sometimes the people get scared. So um, let me just, uh, here you see an exhibition design. Um, I, I will just, just skip through the through the space and here you can see how the space, for instance, this was the original and this was um, uh, one of the final states. So I uh, I covered the wall with white wall, uh, drywall, painted it white, put up only um, or mainly um, uh, general lightning and um, you see it's a concrete floor. It's not beautiful, but it's uh, functional and uh, sufficient. And, and it always had some kind of laboratory-like uh, flair, atmosphere, which I like because um, it's, it was a rather neutral uh, lightning in space. And here you see we could uh, play with extra walls and dividing the spaces according to uh, the needs of the exhibition and the needs of the artwork. So we had uh, white cubes, black cubes, we had open spaces uh, and, and others. And uh, as this was an, uh, an, a gallery in an education institution, um, I always like to do, um, um, uh, again, knowledge-based exhibitions. So for instance, I did a, um, a triptych on, a triptych um, called um, The Power of Form, uh, The Beauty of Concept and The Mystery of Figure. And uh, in these three exhibitions, which were all connected to each other, um, in the first exhibition, uh, the mystery of figure, 
um, I wanted to do an exhibition about the contemporary state of figurative art in Turkey. The second exhibition, um, The Power of Form, was an exhibition about the state of um, uh, abstract art in Turkey. And, um, and uh, the last exhibition, The Beauty of Concept, was an exhibition about uh, conceptual art, participatory art uh, in Turkey. Here, for instance, you see Natur Mort. This was an exhibition about um, the still life, so uh, the, the notion of still life in contemporary art. You see Ismet Doğan, uh, Ekrem Yalçınba, Fırat Engin. So what I also try to do is I always try to mix media, genders and generations of artists. Often I also try to mix, you know, known artists with unknown artists. Um, Elif Boyna is here, but also then <coughs> you have artists like Comet here on the right side is Comet and uh, across is Serkan uh, Demir. So um, emerging artists, established artists, sometimes w renowned artists, um, all these different generations always bring uh, something new to the exhibition and I like the mix, the rhythm out of this. So here, for instance, this is a work by Hale Tenger, which is one of the, you know, leading, um, you know, artists that we have currently. Backyard was an ex interesting exhibition because I realized that when I go to artist studios, I always look at two things. The first thing is obviously the artwork, and the second uh, thing is always the library of the artist. And I always try to make connections between the books that they read and the works that they do. So that's why in this exhibition is called Backyard. I wanted to reveal the backyard of the artist, the backyard, which is mostly hidden, of the artwork. So that's why I asked the artist to give me one work and one piece of there or one part of the library. And actually, here with Ismet Doğan, for instance, uh, or Sinan Demirci, I even asked the artist to give me uh, the original uh, bookshelf of them. So, uh, and here you could then see the books that they read and the work that they do. And this was some kind of alternative way of maybe uh, reveal, revealing the context of, of art. So in this exhibitions, for instance, aesthetic, is not at the forefront. Aesthetic is not the most important important thing. Actually, in a way, art's conceptual dimension or even the mediation and explanation and understanding of art is is much more important in this exhibition uh, than uh, you know in in other works. Here you see performing memory. Here I did an exhibition about performance art in Turkey. Um, Burak Dili Er, Nezakit Ekici, Didem Er, Genji Gulan, Erdal Inji, and others, let's say, Ferhat Özgür, were there. And what I tried to discuss in this exhibition was actually how can we archive and how can we mediate performance art because it's always time and site specific, and mostly after the exhibition, nothing is left over to collect or to exhibit. So I asked the, the, the artist to give me artifacts and things and leftovers from the performances and then we uh, exhibited these performances it could be you know a dress it could be something that they were using during the performance and then we exhibited these artifacts in some kind of museum like way uh, on pedestals and shelves and uh, onto the wall so we we discussed how to uh, mediate and archive and um, exhibit performance art. Neo Neon, uh, Neo Neon was a, a funny exhibition, a nice exhibition. This was like most probably the first and foremost only exhibition on neon art in Turkey. Um, so as you know that, uh, as you know in, in contemporary art for the last, you know, in, in, in the West for the last 50 years and also in Turkey for the last 20 years, neon became a very popular media. So in this exhibition, I uh, exhibited leading artists that are working with neon often in their work. So Fırat Engin or Adan Özmen Olu or Mehmet Ali Uysal were artists which are uh, often are using neon. And so that's, it was an interesting exhibition because normally we have a white cube with lights and stuff, but this time it was a totally black cube uh, and um, it was conceptually strong but also aesthetically uh, very powerful. So you could 
it looked like a lounge or like a nightclub in a way. And um, for me, it was important to, to discuss neon as a material for uh, contemporary artists. Let me speed up a bit. Merz, huh, that's, that was an interesting exhibition. Merz 3000, the future is collage. Um, as you know, collage since Picasso and Braque, uh, and especially the Dadaists uh, at the beginning of the 20th century is an important alternative way of producing art. Uh, in Turkey, collage, uh, Turan Hoca knows it much better than me, actually very lately entered the regular uh, art uh, scene. Uh, when you talk with um, older generations, Komet, Ismet Doğan, Irfan Önürmen, so artists who are very early in their career have been working with collage. You always hear that, you know, collage was never take something which is not as serious as painting, for instance. But obviously collage is something very, very important. Today, I would say in contemporary art, everything is collage conceptually and technically in a way. So that's why in this exhibition I wanted to work with artists who are emphasizing collage work like Horusan, uh, Bora Akinjiturk, um, Bora Akinjiturk Dele, um, and other artists. Um, so, and what I try to do here, uh, for instance here you see, um, I wanted to turn the exhibition space uh, into uh, a collage uh, itself. So that's why you have things that are sticking out of the wall. Uh, Bura Erol, here you see, this was previously uh, a pedestal, but then we mounted it onto the wall. So out of the wall came out things and we put something into Sedi Murat Koch, who was in this exhibition, Arda Yalkan, uh, and others. So here again, I try to uh, understand the exhibition space. Lara Ögel on the left here. I try to understand the exhibition space as some kind of large collage. And in the end, uh, I will skip those because that would take too much time. If you want to, you can check um, you can check uh, Plato Sanat's website. Uh, all the exhibitions are over there. I just want to show you maybe my first exhibition of Plato Sanat because this was actually my most radical, most probably. Um, this was this year, uh, Regeneration dot zero one one, a poetic digital art and media and net art. And as you can see, this is still uh, the original space, so we didn't have any walls put in there. So what I did was I created three large platforms for three different topics within art and net art. The first one was uh, public space. So we took stones of the sidewalks. The second one was uh, theater or uh, presentation, uh, freedom of speech, a speech platform that we had. Um, this was this one here, so we had the, this uh, platform covered with theater stage uh, panels. And the last one was uh, romantic and private life. So this one was covered either with, as you can see here, with, um, with a carpet or uh, with um, an artificial uh, grass um, era. And what you can see here, everything was left open. So the cables were an aesthetic element of um, the exhibition space. Um, we had projections, we had laptops, we had computers, so we had all kinds of different screening and sharing uh, methods of digital art in there. Um, but this time, like I said, not, not on walls, but onto platforms. So you had to enter the platform, you had to sit on the platform, and that's why all these platforms, in a way, also meant social spaces, spaces where the people could gather and come together. And this is something that I believe is the main um, power and the main function of digital art, of art in general. And I think this gathering or this uh, creating a space for people to meet with art and to 
meet with artists at the session of the curator. So uh, in this sense, I would like to uh, finish my uh, presentation and um, you know just uh, leave this presentation here on. Uh, last time, if you have any rec recommendations, any uh, things that you would like to add or ask, this would be now your possibility to do so. Buyurunuz arkadaşlar, var mı sormak istediğiniz bir şey? Markus. Efendim Turan. Thank you for everything. It was great and I think we understood uh, how difficult or how complex uh, to prepare an exhibition uh, and the notes you put, uh, especially uh, between art and uh, exhibiting, uh, making art and exhibiting art, I think it's very, very, very important because uh, it is really, uh, yes, uh, when you produce a, a painting, uh, you deal with uh, just one material, actually. But when you produce uh, painting, 3D pieces, photographs, videos, etc., et it gets difficult because, because you need to think uh, with different materials and different techniques. And it is very obvious that uh, exhibiting works uh, interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary, as you said, uh, as difficult as uh, making art, I think, yeah. It is, it is, it is related. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm totally against uh, the notion of uh, the curator being some kind of meta-artist or super-artist. Yeah. When you look at literature in, 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 in the research and the context of curatorial work, you always, you often see uh, as some kind of criticism uh, that uh, the curator is uh, overshadowing the the exhibition. I mean, like when you when you think about the Istanbul Biennial, we always yeah. talk about the curators and the frameworks, and we do not talk about, about the actual art. On the one hand, this is something which I think is the result of uh, the media, because the media quickly. Uh, tries to gather uh, information and the curator together with the institution is some kind of representative of the exhibition. So that's why when uh, the that's media right, yeah. wants to talk with somebody, you know, they talk with the curator because he's available. Um, but obviously, I mean, if you look at, if you look at uh, the relation between curators and artists, there always should be some kind of power balance. So... Um, and it is not easy, certainly. You know, yeah. it's not, not easy to work with artists, I know very well. And you are it's, dealing with spaces, materials, artists, uh, let's say a concept, whatever. It's really difficult, yeah. What I, what I always think and what m makes my life as curator easier, I always, um, I, mean, I mean, today I was talking a lot, but uh, I, I, I love to listen. And actually, I think that listening is more important than talking. So when I am together with artists, first of all, I try to listen to them. I try to understand them. And as curator, yeah, I mean, the more you know about art and the more you understand how artists are working, the easier it is to understand them and the easier it is to, to work with artists. Because I don't put artists yeah. onto a higher pedestal as some kind of spiritual being which has senses beyond ours, you know. But obviously their uh, life and their working uh, routines are totally Practices, different from, yeah. from, from normal people. And their senses are in a way differently developed or they have different um, prefaces and um, you know things that that matter to them and I think this is some kind of experience the more you work with artists and the longer you are part of the art world the more you understand them and the more you know what you can touch upon or what you should try to avoid and 
as curator, always try to find a middle way between what I want and what the artists want. And in the end, obviously, and this is actually the difficult part, I think, in the end, obviously, you also, you also have to think about what the institution wants and what the people want. Yes. When people ask me how, how <clears throat> I curate, I, the first thing is pretty strange, maybe, and maybe very egoistic, but I always say, I do the exhibition first and foremo foremost for myself. So I only do exhibitions and topics that I am interested in. The second one, obviously, which I am res responding to, um, which I'm re responding to scope. So if the artists That's are pleased wrong. with the exhibition, the I'm yeah. fine. And then the, then, then the third thing comes the institution. I, and I mean, mostly if I'm pleased with it and if, and if the artists are pleased with it, the institution and, uh, and the audience uh, is pleased with this as well. But even if the people wouldn't like it, I don't know whether I would care much. It's a bit like you, Turan. I mean, think about it. if you are in the studio, how much are you considering the outside world? I mean, are you considering whether it gets so old? I shouldn't. Are you, are you <laughs> because considering I, I, what, the, what the critics will say? Are you considering... You know, you shouldn't, you know. No, I shouldn't, because I can do Good. the best for myself, I think. Yeah, you, you foremost do it for yourself. I mean, you became an artist for yourself. You, you yeah. became an artist not for, be, for becoming rich or, or popular or, or, or whatever, you know. So, um, so, so this is what we as curators should try to understand. We should understand the institution. We should understand the artists and we should understand the artworks. And we always try, should try to create exhibitions that matter, that matter to the institution, that matter to the artist, and that have some kind of addition to the art world. It's a bit like a master thesis or doctoral thesis, PhD thesis. So I always try to, to create something new which then means an addition to the given status quo. And maybe an artist might be inspired by the artwork that he or she sees, or maybe an arts manager or a young curator might be inspired by the work that I do. So in a way, this creation of knowledge and sharing of knowledge obviously has to have a function. You know, In a way, I say I do it for myself, but obviously I know that I'm part of the art world and I'm, that I'm part of Istanbul or whatever. And being part of this uh, scene creates also some kind of responsibility. So therefore, I always try to do exhibitions that I find appealing. I try to set up a professional environment for the artist. And in the end, I always try to set up together with the artist an alternative world in which the audience can enter and discover new knowledge and new insights, critical insights in the given reality that we are all facing right now. Yes, I would say that would be it. Thank you. Um, uh, Turan Hoja. By the way, um, we know, uh, I mean, I know Turan Hoja for a long time. I mean, since 2004 can, as an artist in, in Siemens. I, can, I cannot hear together. you, Marcus, very well. Ah, really? Do you hear me? Anybody else? Problems with the sound? Ah, no, 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 it's okay. Okay. No, it's okay, okay, but okay. My, I'm using my uh, phone and uh, the charge is running out. What What did you say at last? Sorry. I, I, I just said in the end that... Um, then the nice thing about curatorial work is actually that you that you that you get to meet a lot of different people and a lot of different artists and when you work with artists and yeah. when it turns out well you actually also become friends with them sometimes it's difficult to divide friendship and professional relationships but me as an art me, me as a german you know i can still do this separation yeah. <laughs> and what what i really like about this this whole curatorial practices 
you know, like with Turan Hoca, we, we just met at Yedi Tepe and then we did the first exhibition together yeah. in 2004 and then we did another one in 2010. Ago, yeah. And these are, in a way, long-term relationships, which I really favor. And you can see the development of an artist, the development of a friendship, and so forth. The professional network also becomes some kind of, you know, uh, individual and private network. And this is something what I, what I really love about the job. So I constantly learn something, and I learn it from the artist. So therefore, uh, I'm, I'm very thankful and I'm very pleased to, to do so. Thank you very much, Turan Oja. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you for everything. It was great. Okay, so then uh, I just finish uh, the the seminar, the presentation. I wish you all a pleasant day. Uh, stay self, uh, safe, happy, and healthy in in, in Cyprus. Uh, hope to see, and um, hope to maybe see we see each other uh, online or offline. <laughs> we will try to arrange that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you, you did before, right. and then came COVID and and other things. But as soon as traveling is safe again, I promise you to come over. I mean, I've been to Cyprus twice, and um, I I am looking forward to uh, seeing okay. you Thank over you. there. Thank you. Bye okay. Bye. Come on. Okay. Bye -bye. See you later. Bye bye. Good evening. Good evening.